What's up, Average Dad fans? Welcome back to another video. And it's this. A quick update slash few questions answered on the Huawei Mate XT. Namely, how do I get Google Apps on my device? How am I enjoying the big display? Is the battery life any good? Well, I'm going to give you a quick update on all those questions now. Let's go. So first things first, I have to talk about the elephant in the room, and it's Google. Yes, Google on the Huawei is a bit of a pain in the backside, I'm not going to lie. There are, I've counted about six different ways to potentially get Google apps on a device, but the way I have chosen to do it is the quickest, easiest, and for me so far, has been the most seamless transition to using my favorite Google Apps. Now, this might not be cool for everyone because, well, you're about to find out, but here's how I do it. So once I got the device, I set up, connected to the Wi-Fi, put my fingerprint in, done all that stuff. And at that point is where you could go down the micro G route. Now I'll leave a link in the description for how to do the micro G installation, but that can take about 20 minutes and it might not work first time. However, when it does work, it is seamless Google native apps on your device with the icons on the homepage, no little G space or G box marks, full notifications. So it is potentially worth the time to set up properly if you're keeping this device long term. Other ways to do it are G Space and G Box. They are virtual Google Play stores essentially. Don't take much to set up, however, you will be bombarded with advertisements every time you open an app and close it. And if you do add the apps to the home screen, you're going to get a little icon in the corner that says G Box or G Space or a little G. But again, you can access your Google Play account, you can get Gboard and Google Calendar, Google Maps, all that good stuff. Then there's the way I've done it. I went into the Huawei store and I searched Google or Gmail or Gboard or any Google app. And the first option that comes up is this little green icon with the red writing, Chinese writing, and yes, I admit at first glance it seems uh, a bit dodgy and in Chinese. However, when you download it and open the app, you will see a few Google apps at first, like YouTube and Gmail and the uh, normal Google web browser, but there's a search button where you can search for the rest. What you have to do is think of this app as a folder. So you know how you set up folders on your homepage when you click into the folder, it opens up and there's loads more apps? That's how this app is treated on my device. I've actually added it to the dock because what you cannot do is create desktop shortcuts, or certainly not that I've seen how to. You can't create desktop shortcuts from the in-app to then go onto your home screen. But for me, I don't care. I like a clean home screen. I've still got all the apps on here just now, but soon they'll all be shoved away into a folder because Huawei won't allow an app drawer for some strange reason in 2024. But anyway, back to the app. So that's what I do. I've just got all the Google apps that I use downloaded in this app slash folder. And then when I open it, I click on any of the apps and instantly they open up. And they're all connected to my average dad YouTube account, my Google account. Google Photos work seamlessly. All the photos and videos I've interjected into other videos on the Huawei Mate XT have all been through Google Photos native direct on this device through that app. And I didn't have to sign up to anything. I didn't have to go through lots of different processes and changing the region. The region on mine is UK. I know for Micro G, you have to set the region to China. And for other workarounds, you may have to set a German region or a Spanish region. But for this app, it's just UK. It's the full Huawei experience with an English keyboard, although you can download Gboard. And I have had zero issues. So that's how I get Google 
the quickest, easiest, and most seamless way that I've found out how just now. And it's been working great for me. And there's other advantages to this that I'm going to talk about now. Multitasking. The Huawei Mate XT, you would imagine, would be the best multitasking experience because it's just so huge. However, it's not. It still only allows two apps side by side and two floating windows. However, you can have those floating windows to be your Google Apps. So as you can see here, I've used Instagram, I've used YouTube as floating apps. You can then use the native apps to split screen horizontally or vertically. So super handy if you want to be watching YouTube and scrolling Instagram and taking notes or replying to messages or doing whatever you want to do. But the benefit being that with this green icon that I've just talked about, you can have multiple apps open at the same time, which again, isn't always achievable with other workarounds. And then just sticking with multitasking, it should also be mentioned that you can use stylus support on, well, obviously all three screens here because it's the one same panel. Stylus support is supported, too many supports, but I don't have a Huawei pen at the moment and I have no plans to buy one because you may be shocked to hear this. This is not a keeper for me. This is actually already sold. I advertised it for sale yesterday along with three Honor Magic V3s, used ones, and they're already sold as well. So congratulations to those who bought them. You've got yourself a cracking deal. And for the person that bought the Huawei Mate XT, you are going to love it. And another couple of reasons why you will love it and if anyone's interested in the XT, you can obviously buy it from the Average Dad Tech Store. There's 5% off all products at the moment. So have a peruse, see what you think. And as an added bonus, I am actually taking £300 off the price of every single variant. Yes, I've kind of quietly added that into this video but average dad tech store is taking 300 pounds off the cost of every variant that's black and red half terabyte or terabytes by the time this video comes out the store will be updated and from that new price you can still take five percent off which is another two or three hundred pounds off and as i mentioned a big reason why i love this device like i really love this device is the display the display that can be folded fully, unfolded once, or unfolded twice. Literally every scenario or use case is covered from just this one screen. And I know this screen is exposed here. But the Huawei Mate XS2, the Honor Magic V Purse, they have the same thing, the exposed screen. And in 2024, these aren't going to break. You're actually better off with one of these screens and I know that sounds weird these are far more durable than a Samsung or a Google Pixel fold screen it's not just your typical folded phone that folds shut screen inside with that kind of rubbery feeling this is ultra thin glass with a screen protector pre-installed on the whole screen as well I've had that question yes there's a screen protector installed now what goes along with the display, watching your movies or YouTube videos or whatever content you want to watch, is fantastic speakers. You would think that from something less than 4 millimeters thick, yes, 3.6 millimeters at the end, crazy, you would think the speakers would be pretty goddamn trash. And no, the speakers inside here are pretty damn good. Here's how they sound. But again, please, this is through a YouTube video, so they're not going to sound as good as if you were in the room with it. But have a listen.
Told you, pretty damn good speakers. Granted, you're just going to connect your Bluetooth headphones anyway, but if you're in a pinch or you just want to watch something in the kitchen, maybe you want to bring up your favourite cooking recipes or whatever you want to do on this huge canvas, that's another big benefit of the Huawei Mate XT. And I know what you're thinking, but surely, durability-wise, this is not going to last. I beg to differ. I mean, it's only been a week for me, but I've had no issues. I'm also not seeing any issues of the screen or anything breaking. Keep in mind that every single mobile phone has issues, whether it be new or old. It's tech. Tech fails, but that's why warranties exist. And then another big reason I really, really like this phone is because it's still a flagship phone with a 5600 milliamp hour battery. Granted, if you've got it in the full screen mode for most of the day, it ain't going to last. But in normal phone standard size, that battery is going to last you at least a day, maybe even two. Of course, you're paying a flagship price for this, but as I've talked about in other videos, you're paying to be a pioneer, essentially. You're paying to be the first. And I know, I've mentioned this before as well, you generally don't want to be buying first generation products. I mean, Christ, look at the Microsoft Duo. You don't want to be buying the first one, you want to buy the second one. But as a tech reviewer, I was always going to buy this and I have been pleasantly surprised. If I had to objectively look at, which I always do, and think about areas to upgrade, I am honestly struggling because it's the only trifold of its kind. Maybe, no, I can't even think of anything. I genuinely can't think of anywhere that this phone could improve. Yes, they could try and make it lighter, keeping in mind that it's under 300 grams anyway. Making it lighter than that, to me, is sacrificing potential durability, potential camera hardware, 50 watts wireless charging, a 5600 milliamp hour battery. I honestly think Huawei have smashed out of the park in their first iteration. And of course, you know this, but I just want to reiterate for any new viewers, I'm not sponsored by Huawei. Huawei didn't give me this device. I bought it with my own money from my own store. But credit where credit's due. Huawei have software issues. I talked about that at the start of the video. I showed you some workarounds. But that's not their fault. That's jealous Western countries like the US not being able to keep up hardware-wise. So the one thing they can do is try and limit the software. But Huawei are fighting back. And it's not only Google Apps that you won't get soon. Soon you'll not be able to download APKs. Soon there'll be no affiliation to Android whatsoever. Massive changes coming up and I'll be doing a video very soon to discuss those changes and talk about the potential mainly negative impacts it's going to have for me in the UK, you in the US or Europe. So if you haven't already subscribed to that, subscribe to the channel and I'll have a video out about that very soon. And that's it. That's my update on the XT. I still love it. Everything I've said about it from when I first got it and first impressions remains true. The most versatile foldable phone on the planet with fantastic cameras, an amazing display, outstanding build quality and the biggest eye turner you're ever going to see. Trust me, when you have this out in public, people ask, people stare. I feel like Kim Kardashian, but I've got bigger tits. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'll be back soon with another video. Until next time.